All right, is everybody ready to go on our outdoor adventure? Fantastic. So we are going to head to Ashland State Park today. And when we're there, we're gonna be looking for different places where we can find water. So maybe we'll find some lakes or streams, who knows? And when we find them, I want you to identify what state that water is in. Do we see the water as a solid, a liquid, or a gas? And we're also gonna be paying special close attention because we wanna learn about some of the animals and plants that might depend on those bodies of water. So get ready and I will see you all soon. Okay, so we are here at Ashland State Park and what body of water do you think this is? Is it an ocean, a glacier, a river? If you said a lake, you are correct. And there are lots of animals that need this lake for habitat and to find food and water and shelter. And dogs even love to swim in it. And if you look closely through the brush, you can see that there's a little pond over here. And if you listen closely, you can listen to the calls of an animal called the wood frog. Now wood frogs are amphibians, so that means they live part of their life in the water and part of it on land. All right, so here in the forest, just along the edge of one of my paths, I found this little body of water. So there is definitely water in the forest, which is important. And this body of water is called a vernal pool vernal pool and it's important for a lot of creatures I'm gonna zoom in here let's see if we can spot something right. oh did you see that look at look 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 there is a little orange fella who's swimming around in here so the vernal pool right behind me where we just saw that little creature floating around, we don't know what he is yet, but I'm gonna see if I can get some closer footage. But remember where we found it. And um, vernal pools are really, really important for a lot of animals because in the summer, all this water, when it starts to get warmer and really hot, will start to evaporate, right? It will turn into a gas, go up into the clouds. So this little vernal pool will actually disappear. And since the pool disappears, do you think anything like a fish could live in there? No, because fish need water to survive all the time. But that makes this space really important for some little creatures, some little amphibians, amphibians like frogs or salamanders, because fish love to eat frog and salamander eggs. So if you are a frog or a salamander, are you gonna lay your eggs in a vernal pool that dries up so there are no fish? Or are you gonna to go to a pond? Might be a little more dangerous over there. So vernal pools are great nurseries for amphibians because they can grow up safe without the predators that might want to eat those eggs or those baby amphibians. Okay, everybody. So I just rolled over this log here and I found the creature that we are looking for in that vernal pool. This is a creature called a red eft, and it's a kind of amphibian, just like frogs, so they also depend on water in its liquid state to live out their life cycle. So when they're juveniles, they live here in the forest, but then when they grow up, they will actually leave their forest homes and they will go find one of those vernal pools to grow up in and find a mate and lay their eggs. So it's very important for them as well. So take a quick look and we're gonna put my friend back right under the log where we found him safe and sound. All right, so if you guys look straight ahead, this plant here is called skunk cabbage. So how do you think it smells? Yeah, pretty bad, I agree. And skunk cabbage is an interesting plant because it actually grows in swampy areas. So it needs water to survive. It can't grow in a place that's not nice and damp and moist. And if you look closely at this stick right here, right here, you will see a little pair of eyes. Who do you think that is? Can everybody see? Look at that. 
the little frog here hanging out in our vernal pool. Let's name him Fred. Let's see what else we can find. So we've also come across this little stream. It's running back into the lake over here. If you look, you can see some skunk cabbage right over there in the distance too. Okay, so at the edge of the lake here, I've found evidence of another animal that uses this place as a habitat. So take a look at this tree here. What do you notice? Yeah, I agree. It looks kind of like it's missing a piece right here. Can you think of an animal that might have been able to do that? An animal that maybe likes to chomp on trees? Yes, a beaver, definitely. They chomp down these trees so that they can make dams where they find shelter. And beavers love to live on lakes and rivers. So thanks for exploring with me today, everyone. I had a lot of fun looking for those different states of water with you. But before we go, I'm in my backyard right now and I have found one more place where I can find water. Check it out. What did you see? Tons and tons of clouds. So water is all around us everywhere we look, everybody. So make sure that as you're exploring outside, you're keeping an eye out for water and its different forms through the seasons. And take a look and see if you can identify how plants and animals are using that water to help them survive. Happy water hunting, everybody.